Welcome back to the Illuminated Path. This is episode 60. What are we talking about today? We're talking about an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset and how, what those actually mean and like how to really go more towards an abundance mindset, which is definitely um, the goal for yeah. everyone. I think this is a really good topic too because we've talked a lot about manifestation. We recently did our money mindset episode. Um, and this really ties in with a lot of things with your relationship with money, but also just your relationship with opportunity with your career and work or finding the right house, like whatever it is. And it also is very closely related to a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, which we've Mm -hmm. talked about, but I think this really helps kind of expand the perspective there. So I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, so we want to talk about how you can really shift from that place of lack to more gratitude, more abundance. And it's important to first like understand if you are in a scarcity mindset and understand like, oh, maybe I am actually doing that or feeling that way or having those thoughts because you have to become aware so that you can actually shift it. Yeah. So why don't we first start with a scarcity mindset? Because I think that if you have your average person who turns on the news and watches the news and listens to everything the news says, there's a very real level of programming there. And I say all that because this is the typical mindset that a lot of people have. Right. Because that's what you're hearing. So of course, like that's literally the information that you're taking on on in on a daily basis. It's the same thing as if that's what you were scrolling on social media seeing. Right. It's on social media. It's in our education system. It's, you know, finding a job and workplace culture. There's this narrative of scarcity with everything. Money, houses, just things in general, like buying cars. It's just there's so much fed to us that if you listen to it, it's going to be very easy to adopt that scarcity mindset because that's what you're being told. Right. So what really is it? What does it mean? It's it's rooted in fear and it's having fear like that there is there is lack there's not enough and that you can't have something. Mm. And and we also talked about in that money mindset episode, um, I think it was that one, we talked about, you know, money as this flow of energy. And I think that this is a really important point because if you have a belief that is rooted in fear, you know, we've talked about the frequency of the body, frequency of emotions, you're in a very low emotion, whereas money is a high frequency. And so you have that sort of discrepancy of you're on the low end and money's on the high end. And that can really get in the way of you changing your money story. A lot of people who think money is scarce and they struggle with money, they're people who typically are in a cycle that they they don't really find a way out. And a lot of them um, continue to work the same job that they're complaining about all the time and it, they're they're stuck in a cycle. And a lot of that is that scarcity mindset that they don't break. And it's hard to get yourself out of that when that is your current reality. Like, I'm not saying like your current reality isn't that you right, right. maybe aren't making as much money as you want or you're in a job that's not good and you are struggling to pay bills. Like that is your potential current reality and that's valid. But in order to shift into a more abundant mindset and get out of the scarcity and lack mindset and, and fear, you have to open yourself up to believe in opportunity, belief in the potential. Mm-hmm. And then you will open yourself up to those opportunities to find ways to create change in your life. It's always, always possible to create change. I'm actually... Yeah. um. Sorry, this is a little off topic, but I mean, no, it, it, it. Feels I've relevant. Done that once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> it feels relevant. So I'm taking an, a course right now in NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming. And it's fascinating. I've been interested in it for years. I'm going to have to dive into it so deeply yeah. in the future when I'm finished with the course. But one of the very um, one of like the principles that I'm learning. So it's all about how like your thoughts and your language creates your programming, which is like creates your life. Yeah. And so one of the things that I just kind of learned was there's always, if you don't have something that is a resource, you can always create it. Mm-hmm. Time is a resource. 
money is a resource. And you have to first believe that even if you don't have it right now, that it is possible to create. And the question was asked was if it was a life or death situation, could you find time? Could you somehow make money? And that is something that is a belief. If you are stuck in, I'm, this is where I am. Like, this is my money story. This is, I don't have opportunity. You're going to be stuck there. Right. And you don't have the belief that you can create it. Yeah. And I, I think a large part of this discussion is really just understanding the manifestation cycle. Like people who are stuck in a state of scarcity, they have beliefs that continue to validate and create that reality. Mm -hmm. And to Kate's point, she's not saying that, you know, everything's fine and dandy and you're supposed to just think that. The reality is, scientifically, you have to put your physical being in a place of understanding and believing that that opportunity is there before your external reality catches up and you start to actually get those opportunities. And that's the reason why manifestation is so powerful because you can actively be manifesting against yourself and not know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's when you are in that scarcity and lack mindset and like, you just, you don't believe that there is more for you, that there can be more. Yeah. Um, it's really a lot of limiting beliefs holding you back. So yeah. again, this was something we talked about in the money mindset episode also is like understanding what are those beliefs? Where did they come from? Because you didn't just choose them yourself. You didn't choose to say, I, I believe that I'm going to struggle with money. Right. You learned that from someone somewhere in your past, typically in your childhood. Mm -hmm. And now since you have that belief, you're just unconsciously taking actions that continues to reaffirm that belief. Yeah. So this scarcity mindset, it's, it's this belief that there is not enough. A lot of times these are also people who see someone else's success as coming at their expense. Yeah. They believe that the opportunity is very finite. And if someone else wins, they, they're taking that away from them. Yeah. Especially like say a job promotion. If someone yeah. wins out over you and that was your opportunity, you have like this very much this mindset of well that that was it and now I don't what now what I don't mm -hmm. have opportunity anymore I don't I'm not gonna make more money and it's that it, it's valid to like you have to feel those feelings and it's okay to be upset by things that happen but you have to be able to see past that and say okay well what's the lesson here what am I learning from this and how can I shift and, and move in a different direction because they're there's probably a reason that opportunity wasn't for me. Yeah. So there are limiting beliefs around what is actually possible. And that could be deeply rooted in all sorts of traumas, also just the programming content that we've received on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a scarcity mindset. Let's discuss an abundance mindset. An abundance mindset is really deeply rooted in gratitude and believing that you have everything you need and more. Mm. I just thought of an example that I think is really good here. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it in the money mindset episode. So same example, but a scarcity mindset would be paying bills and being like, oh God, I'm cleaning out my account. I barely have enough, right? Versus an abundance mindset would be that same thing of the same example we gave in that episode of I'm grateful. Thank God I'm able to pay my bills. Or, you know, there's affirmations you use. Thank God I'm rich. And it's the difference of going through these same, the same situation with vastly different perspectives. Right. One, continuing to create, perpetuate the cycle of scarcity. And the other, leading with love and gratitude and resonating at a high frequency, manifesting more money, having that abundance and that opportunity. And, and I don't think people appreciate how different those two ends of the spectrum are. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like, like you just said, like if it's literally the same people having the exact same thing, like maybe both of them don't have a ton of money in their account, right? but it's a very different perspective and mindset to be in of being grateful and happy and just like knowing and trusting that, next time the bills come around, you're still going to be able to 
pay those at that time and not being yeah. so scared and, you know, thinking about potential to earn more. Yeah. You know, you, you could make an extra hundred bucks this month. You know, you right. have opportunities. It's more about, do you believe in them? And are you looking for them? Yeah, it, it all starts with your thoughts and beliefs, which seems so simple, but it's mm. it's not simple because we are all um, living in a belief system or in a program that was given to us. If if you haven't done the work to become aware of like what beliefs you have, especially around something like abundance or money or your belief that you could earn more, have more in life. If you haven't done the work to dis- like discover what beliefs you have around that currently, you're not going to be able to shift those beliefs right. and you're not going to be able to create a reality of something that you don't believe in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that nothing can become your reality without you first believing it. Yeah. And that's the difference. People don't believe in themselves so they never accomplish what they want to accomplish for themselves. Everybody who's ever, you know, become rich or become famous or invented something or even more simple, got a new job or they believed they could first. They had to have the thought and belief first. Yeah. You don't just like go out and wing it and be like, oh, this fell into my lap. It's not something right. I ever had a thought about. So um I think I'm gonna read here because I have wrote an example about the starving artist. Mm. And I think that this is a really interesting example. Um so in in I guess the creative arts, right? Whether it's music, painting, whatever it is, writing, um, there's this concept of the starving artist, right? Of like, oh, I'm struggling, but I, I'm pursuing my passion. Mm-hmm. And in the book Big Magic, the author talks about how you don't need to do that, and it actually is counterintuitive and doesn't help you pursue your passion. But I think that from a larger perspective, it's heavily rooted in scarcity of only so many artists ever actually make it, right? And then there's the fear of, will I actually make it? And then that circles into, you know, am I going to have enough this month for rent? And and it's this very negative mindset of lack and scarcity of there's no money. That's the big limiting belief there. There's no money in the arts for me. There's no money to be made. Right. You've it's heard only, it all. It's only a handful of people who are actually going to make it. Right. And then you look at abundant artists. Those are the people that are in galleries or they're releasing new albums and they've got collaborations with other artists and they're seeing major successes. And I don't believe that it's just like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a level of luck in anything you do, but there's a difference in your mindset. and the starving artist is the scarcity mindset. The right. abundant artist is the one that really accomplishes what they want to do. Right. Well, if you if you have really taken on that belief of that that's not going to be me, like I won't be the lucky right. one, then no, you won't. Because exactly. that's literally what you believe. So what actions would you ever be taking to like actually get you there? You right. wouldn't because you don't think it's possible. No, because the actions you take validate the belief that it's not you. Right. So I think that when we talk about abundance mindset, it's really understanding that there's always another opportunity. There's always more potential. There's always something else around the corner. And it's really about you having the perspective and the ability to be open to it and to potentially seize that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also about that, you know, there's this post that always floats around every year, easy to spot a yellow car when you're looking for a yellow car, you know, it's, it's the difference of like, if, if scarcity was a red car and abundance was a blue car, which one do you want to focus on? Right. Because what people do is they focus on the scarcity car thinking about why can't I get abundance when the blue car is right next to them, you know? So I don't know if that example made sense, but like. (laughs) It's it's not that there is an opportunity there. It's that you are focused on your scarcity rather than your abundance. Right. So you're not open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we, I think we've talked about a little bit, like, how can you cultivate more of an abundant mindset? Um, 
And it's it's having awareness of what your current beliefs and actions are that are continuing to create the cycle that you're currently in. Yeah. Um, it's understanding like how you feel and what actions you're taking that are either bringing you closer or further um, from that desire. Yeah. Like, are you actually working towards it? Right. And I, I know that we, a lot of this conversation always goes back to money, but I think that's because money, like an abundance mindset, scarcity mindset is not exclusive to money. But I think when we talk about money, it's an area where people have such a complex relationship that it's it's probably the easiest place to spot what your relationship is. Like if you are paying bills and being like, oh God, this sucks, or oh, there's that's a lot of money, you know, rather than being like, oh, I'm grateful I'm able to pay for that, you know? That's a a place to really look at your self-talk. Mm-hmm. It'll reveal a lot to you about yourself. Right. Um, and being intentional with what new beliefs you have to create or w- want to create yeah. in order to start to create more abundance in order to like, what do you actually desire? And in order to be someone who has that, what do you have to believe? Right. Like literally write them down and practice them because these are beliefs that are formed in your brain and it's not something that you're just going to snap your fingers and be like, okay, I believe this now. Like you're, you have these like deep rooted paths in your mind of the current beliefs you have. And in order to create a new path, you have to do it over and over and over and over again and not just like repeat them or think them and be right. like, yeah, I'm abundant. No. And like truly like lean into it and lean into what that would feel like to yeah. have that. I mean, it's hard work. I think that's the thing is like, it's easy for us to sit here and, and talk about, you know, getting to a point where you believe it. Um, but I think 90% of people won't ever work toward it. And of the 10% that do, a lot of them won't reach the point of actually believing it. Right. It's, it's really, really hard work. Yeah. But the payoff is huge. Right. And start to look for evidence that these new beliefs can be true. And like you said, like being thankful when you're paying bills, like that's evidence that, you know, you're abundant because right. you have what you need to pay for your life. Um, and it's it's shifting that mindset around things to look for evidence that will re- make these beliefs true for you. Yeah. Um, other things you can do. Affirmations are great. Um, affirmations are tricky. You know, you do have to use them a specific way and like really reflect on the feelings and um, get intentional with the beliefs. They're also something that is a practice. You need to practice them. It's not like you say your affirmation one day and you're like, hey, I'm abundant now. Mm-hmm. Um, so affirmations can be great. There's visualization meditations. Um, gratitude practices are huge. Uh, that's a really good one, especially if you're like noticing you're in a scarcity mindset. Gratitude practices are a wonderful way to start flexing that muscle and getting out of that. Yeah, just being grateful for like what you do have. It, and it doesn't even have to be related to like what you're feeling lack in, but like being grateful for your health, being mm. grateful for the shelter over your head, like start to practice gratitude because then you are you're in that um, feeling and that frequency of gratitude, which is, you know, similar to that frequency of abundance. Yeah. You know, after everything I went through with suicide recovery and all the medications and everything, the, the one thing I never lost sight of again was being able to say I'm grateful today for food, water, and shelter. I think that puts so much life into perspective when you're able to slow down instead of complaining about your boss or how much something costs or or whatever it is, be grateful for the fact that you lived another day and you've got plenty of resources. And that's the other thing is like people have a scarcity mindset. Meanwhile, they'll have, you know, money to spend on a bunch of shoes and they got their groceries. They have a place to live. They've, you know, they can go out drinking with their friends. Like they, they're not looking at all that they do have. They're not right. appreciating the resources that they do have. 
and they struggle to get more. Right. And even like if you have that, if you look at something that you want or maybe that is really important for you to get and it is more of like a need. Um, if when you at like say to yourself like, oh, I can't afford that. Mm. That is a like a statement that you're making and that is a belief that you have that you've just like reaffirmed in your brain. So you, no, you're not going to do anything yeah. to to try to afford it or see how you could afford it. You believe that statement and you are literally initiating the manifestation process of you continuing to believe that you can't afford something. Right. So even just one small shift you can make there is saying, how can I afford this? Mm, I did. I did uh, adopt that one in my journey. You can start to think about, you know, what are the possibilities? What what might be um, something that you can do to afford it? When you ask your brain questions like it wants to give you answers um and if you don't ask a question and you just decide i can't afford it well that's the thing if you say i can't afford it you're giving your brain this absolute statement right when you say how can i afford it you are encouraging yourself to think about opportunities and that is helping you create abundance yeah and it's it's being open maybe you don't have the answer right now but being open allows for things to change, things to shift, something to come up that that'll get you there. So yeah, it's shifting in in simple ways like that. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else to add? No, I think that's it. All right. Is this, this is our last episode before we get married? Or are we married by the time this one comes out? (laughs) We're married. Oh, wow. The last episode I said, let's get married because it was two days before. We're currently on our honeymoon, guys. Yeah. We'll, so we'll see you guys when we get back. We're enjoying. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you.